Hi, this is Susan Arango from Little Guy CGI, and today I'm going to show you how to unwrap a mesh model in Blender 2.72. So let's get started. If you're new to using Blender, I suggest that you go to File, User Preferences, and here you see Select with Left or Right. Blender is right by default. I suggest you click Left save user settings and that way your mouse will work more like you're used to if you're coming from other programs. For the purposes of this tutorial I'm going to be using a mesh model that my husband Ali Arango created for one of his tutorials. Some of you out there may be familiar with him in his tutorials. It was one of his female um, body tutorials. And there's the model there. I find the grid floor distracting when I'm doing the UV unwrapping, so you push N to bring up this menu, go to display, uncheck grid floor, and that removes the grid floor, so you don't have to look at it the whole time. Push N again, and that display will go away, and then you're ready to go. The other component of Blender that gets in my way when I'm doing this is the red, green, and blue um, directional moving tool. So if you come down here and click that picture of it down here, it removes it from the scene. I don't find that I really need it because most of the moving of the model that I do is middle mouse click will turn it like this. And if you hold shift and hold the middle mouse button, it'll move it like this. And if you roll the middle mouse button, in and out it'll do that so other than that I really don't need any directional movement so I find turning this off removes yet another thing out of the display window just so it doesn't distract me moving on to the model make sure that you have the model selected you push A um, and as you can see nothing is selected now if you push A again everything is selected so you don't want that so we'll push a select nothing and then we'll click on just the model the other way to know exactly what you're clicking on is in this panel over here is the menu of all the components that are in your 3d scene so as you can see we have it labeled right here female body so if I were to turn that eye off she would disappear um, and all that's left is her cute little teeth here that Ollie created so if you push that eye, then that will turn that off. You push the eye, it'll bring the model back. The um, camera makes it non-renderable, and I believe the arrow makes it non-selectable. But for right now, we just want to select the female body, and that's it. So you can either select it from here, or you can select it in your 3D window. After you have the model selected come down here where it says object mode and click and change it to edit mode and you'll see that she turns into a wireframe um, you can see the solid model underneath if you want just wireframe you would come to the next window over and click wireframe and that way you can see through her which is useful in um, selecting the seams where you want to create the seams which we'll get to in a few minutes um, the other way to get to that is if you're in solid mode push Z and it does the same thing it brings up this new pie menu where you can um, choose the mode that you want to be in so either way either down here or pushing Z whichever one you're more comfortable with Okay, now that you have your model and you know how to get to the wireframe mode because you're going to need to uh, be in that mode in order to create your seams, the other thing you're going to have to do is up here in the corner you'll see these little marks. Left click, grab, and drag to the left, about like that. And what this does is it splits your 3D window and allows you to use the other panel as a different function of Blender. So we're going to leave the right hand side as our 3D model window. 
The left hand side, if you come down here, you can see um, you can change it to various different modes. Uh, for this particular video, we're going to do the UV image editor. So you click that and you should see this box pop up. Um, right now, because this is a new UV unwrap, down here it's new and open and everything is at the default down here. If for some reason you saw a rendered layer here, just hit the X and it'll take you back to um, an empty UV window. Sometimes um, Blender remembers things you don't necessarily want it to remember. But this is the way it should look to just get started when you're doing a brand new UV unwrap. Now that you have Blender all set up, you're ready to mark your seams. If you want to have it in wireframe, that's fine, or solid underneath the wire, it's entirely up to you, whichever um, mode you prefer. The other boxes down here you need to concern yourself with are these. They correspond to what the lines are on your mesh. This is the faces edges and vertices for the purpose of marking seams we're going to have the edges box selected so when you click here you see that it selects just the lines as opposed to the face or just the point or the vertice on the edge if i turn the model around you can see that on this side it's also selected that's because ollie has a mirror modifier applied to this um, or not applied to this model that um, allows you to select on one side it automatically selects on the other side for unwrapping it can be useful so that you don't have to go around and select every um, part of the model it automatically does it on the opposite side so for right now the mirror modifier is fine if whatever your model you are doing um, for whatever reason you didn't want the mirror modifier um, doing that when you are trying to mark your seams. Come over here to this panel, hold your middle mouse button down, pull to the side until you see the wrench. The wrench is all the modifiers. Here you can see um, the modifiers that he has on there and if you wanted to not have it select both sides at the same time on the mirror modifier you would just click apply and then whatever you selected would be the only thing that was selected but for right now I'm going to leave it on because it makes my life easier um, when trying to unmark uh, when trying to mark the seams to do the unwrap another little trick that's useful when you're marking seams is if you hold alt and click if there's an edge loop on the model, it'll select it all the way up and around um, whatever that edge loop is attached to. So right here, we went down the whole side of her leg. Now over here, we're gonna go down the inside of her leg. So still holding Alt, but adding Shift as well. So holding Shift and Alt, you click this, and what that does is it keeps the one that you already made and adds the other edge loop in there so that the legs are now cut in half. And if you want to see it all the way around, you can switch to the wireframe. And as you can see, her legs end right here at the bottom of her shorts to make the, the mesh um, typography simpler. And if you look down here at the legs, it ends at the ankles. So that's selected all the way um, up and down both sides with just two clicks because you held alt and then you held alt and shift to select the edge loops. So after you have your selection then you hit control E which brings up your panel for marking the seams. You come down here to mark seam and click mark seam. Then if you hit A you'll see that where you marked a seam is now red. So as you go through your model and you mark the different seams, if you find somewhere that you made a mistake or whatever and you wanna remove the mark seam, you would just click on that part, hit Control E again, and clear seam. Hit A, and as you can see now right there, the seam is gone. 
If you ever need to go back steps in Blender, usually Control Z will work. So if you hit Control Z, it brings back my last click. Another Control Z will bring back the scene. And another Control Z will take me back to where I originally started. So there's our seams on our legs, and we know exactly where they are and exactly where they're going to unfold. I've watched a lot of videos about UV unwrapping, and there's some tried and true rules as far as um, I could find for, say, clothing or bodies. You want to go along the natural seams of where in clothing, um, under the arms, between the legs, down the side of the leg, around the waist, the um, collars, shoes, things like that. The tricky part gets when you get into things that um, don't normally have seams or have a lot of seams like an airplane or a tank or something like that. So I have another model that um, I may throw in here later on of an airplane which unwraps fairly easily until you get to the tail. And I still haven't figured out a really good way to unwrap the tail so that it unwraps correctly so when I texture paint on it, it comes out right. But the, the human body um, is fairly simple to unwrap because you just go along the natural lines of clothing. Now one way to check if you're happy with the way your seams are going to be and the way your mesh is going to unwrap is to come down here and change this to faces. Um, I also find it easier to switch it to solid as well. Click one of the faces, and two are going to highlight here because, again, we have the mirror modifier on. But click one of the faces, and then if you hold Control and hit L, if you have a good seam marked, then you should only see the one part of the seam. So you know that the dividing line is here, and that when you unwrap this, you're going to see the front, and you're going to see the back. Again, this is very simple. The human body is pretty simple to unwrap. When you get into shoes and planes and cars and stuff like that, it gets a little more difficult. If you want to check somewhere else, just hit A to deselect. Let's come up here to the shorts. Hit Control L. And as you can see, the entire shorts is now selected because I haven't marked a seam on there yet. So let's hit A. Switch back to edges. We'll come here. We'll hold Alt. We'll select that edge loop. It selected it on the other side. So now we need to select between the legs. So we hold shift so that we don't lose our original selection. Hold alt again, hit that, and now the inside is selected as well. Then we hit control E, mark our seam, hit A, deselect. We see the red line there. Now we're going to check and see if it does the same thing that the leg does, and we'll know that we have a good seam mark. So we'll come here. Again, you see it on both sides because of the mirror modifier. Control L and only the front of the shorts highlight. Back of the shorts don't. So we know that this seam is good. Now where that comes into play is if I put it in wireframe and zoom in, oops, you can see here how her shorts separate from her legs. They're not a separate object, but they're just not connected in the mesh. Um, another place that you can see this fairly well is um, when you have a face and inside the mouth and all of that. Um, it helps a lot to use the Control L to see exactly where your seams are marked so that you know where one part's going to end and another one's going to open in order to um, unwrap it correctly. So like I said, here you can see where the shorts end and the legs begin. So um, that way you know exactly where to mark your seams. For the sake of time, I've went ahead and marked the seams on the shirt as well as the shoes because it's the same principle as the shorts and the legs. So now we're going to move to the hands and the head. Now, as far as the hands are concerned, in this particular um, model, the hands are separate from the arm, which helps a lot. 
if you zoom in again you have to use your middle mouse button to zoom in and out you use shift and hold down the middle mouse button to move this way and this way and you use just the middle mouse button if you want to turn to the side so after a while you'll get used to um, the holding the different buttons to manipulate the the model the way you want it to go if it just jumps all of a sudden off the screen ollie says the best thing to do is push period to bring it back into center if you will but after a while you'll get used to manipulating the things in 3d space and flipping them around and all of that you just have to get used to which buttons to push to make it do what so as far as the hands are concerned um you need to separate them basically top and bottom. So if you apply the same principles as we did on the legs and the shorts, you hold Alt and click and you get an edge loop. However, this edge loop doesn't go all the way around. So we're gonna manipulate it a little bit. I'm holding my middle mouse button to turn it this way. Um, and we're gonna find the best line to follow around the side to get it to split as in half as we can get it so having it on wireframe mode now helps a lot as opposed to the solid and just slowly manipulating it around so that you can get the best view because what will happen is if you just start clicking you're going to click lines that you don't necessarily want if you do that um, you always have to remember to hold shift whether you're selecting a new line or unselecting a line that you clicked by accident so let's say um, we have this edge loop here selected, so we have to hold shift, otherwise we'll lose that selection. So let's say we hit here and we didn't mean to hit there. So you hold shift and just click again and that will go away. Um, move it around to make sure you don't have anything selected you don't want selected. So let's choose this one here. And again, you just use your middle mouse button holding it down and you just have to remember to hold shift when you want to select something and alt if you want to edge select it which nothing will hurt it if you if you do that so now we have a completely new edge selected which may work so let's hold shift and deselect this one Hold shift, deselect that. So that edge loop goes all the way up the finger. So we're gonna keep that one. And then we're gonna come to the top of the finger here. Again, holding shift, we're going to select. And this is one of the things that I told Ali about is important about how he makes his mesh because when you're trying to unwrap it, if you have all of these extra lines and stuff it makes it very difficult to unwrap and confusing so he started doing his mesh a little differently so that um, it can be a little more simplified so that when you're trying to unwrap it you don't have so many lines to deal with all the time but if you just go through and again holding your middle mouse button and just manipulating it around to get the best view holding alt and shift to, to select your edge loops and it'll select if you hold alt whether it's an edge loop or not so I find it's easiest to just hold alt in the off chance that it is an edge loop now here we need to move the whole thing over so I'm going to hold down shift and move and that fortunately doesn't do anything to your selection so that's a good thing now over here some people that I've watched their videos I see them isolate the thumb so you would come around like this and keep going and make the thumb a completely separate uh, UV unwrap from the hand other people I've seen them incorporate the thumb um, both of them seem to work okay I guess it's just a matter of preference or, or how your your uh, mesh is laid out but for the purpose of this tutorial we're going to leave the thumb incorporated in the hand again minor movements around here in order to get um, see it's doing its flipping thing now in order to get the right line selected um, I'm going to zoom out just so I can get it reoriented the way it should be and 
and we'll just continue down the rest of the hand and that should do it so we have it selected all the way around um there may if i was gonna texture paint this with actual uh, skin texture it would probably not be the best place to mark the seam because this is the total bottom and the side wouldn't texture paint right however let's say we were going to do something where the top was going to be flesh and the, the inside here was going to be some kind of tentacles or something of an octopus then this unwrap would work fine so we're going to go with the octopus thing and we're going to leave the unwrap like this so after you get your seams lined up control e mark seam hit a check the red again if you want to check and see where your mesh is going to unwrap we'll switch back to faces we'll choose one control l so as you can see the whole top side of the hand is going to unwrap like that if we choose here and hit control l the whole bottom side of the hand is going to unwrap and as you can see if i can show you the other side here again mirror modifier we only have to do the one side because the mirror modifier selected the other side for us so that's why sometimes it's a good thing to have that um, so you only have to do the one side so we're going to deselect we're going to go and do the head now now again using just shift and the middle mouse button and slow turning her around zooming in and out and all of that will get her in the position um, that we want in order to mark the seams on the head and just like with everything else i've mentioned i've seen several tutorials people do it differently um, the one thing that i did find that was if you're going to have a lot of detail on the face they separate out the face as a separate um, uv unwrap so that they can manipulate it better if it's just going to be you know a face and a head whatever they say to the best thing to do is to hide the seams inside the hairline so um, you can either come back here and do it or you can come here and do it again it depends on what you're going to do after you unwrap it if you're going to texture paint it if you're going to just put materials on it um, I've Now we're going to select right here on the head. I'm going to just hold shift and not all because I don't want to edge loop select this. So again, because the mirror modifier is on, is, um, on that's why it's selecting both. So we're going to make a, essentially a T. We're going to come across here and then we're going to come down the back of the head like this. Let go of shift, turn her up. Hold shift again continue down the back of her head if you were to hit the edge loop here it would probably go all the way down the front of her face and separate her face in half which you probably don't want now here we can't see if we're all the way at the bottom i think we are but just to make sure we're going to go down here to wireframe and we're going to zoom in and yes we're all the way at the bottom there but that's where going back and forth between solid and wireframe um, comes in handy just so you can make sure that you're where you want to be um, so we're going to hit control e mark seam and that will mark the seam in the head hit a and we see our red lines there now that we have our seams marked we need to apply this mirror modifier so that when we unwrap it it will unwrap correctly over here um, you can't unwrap change the mirror modifier in edit mode which I forgot so now we switch it back to object mode and come over here to our modifiers um, if you can't see which modifier this is just hover over this till you get the arrows pull it out and you can see here it says mirror just hit apply and now when you um, go to unwrap this it will should unwrap correctly switch it back to edit mode hit a to select all hit U and unwrap and there you see all of your pieces unwrapped over here on the UV editor side um, again you can move this over so you can get a little better look um, you can scroll in 
and you can for the most part make out what's what this would be the front of her shirt this would be the back this would be one side of the shorts this would be the other side of the shorts um, front of the legs back of the legs here probably um, top of the hand uh, bottom of the hand here and then these would be the shoes here and the face and head would be here Now I'm going to hit control Z and take that all away I'm going to move this back over I'm going to deselect everything I'm going to put on faces and now I'm going to show you how to unwrap just one portion at a time in case it would be better for um, whatever project you're working on to do it that way. So we're going to select here, hit Control L, and as you can see that is just the front part. Um, if we hold Shift and select and then hit Control L, we select just her shirt. Now if we hit U and unwrap, as you can see over here, we've only unwrapped exactly what we had selected which was her shirt. Um, this allows you a little bit more control to um, decide whether or not you have a good unwrap, whether or not you marked your seams where you want them to be or whatever on more complicated models this can be very useful. Um, as far as this one goes it seems like we have a, a very good seam for the shirt so we're going to call that one done. Now we're going to come have your cursor back over the 3D window because whichever cursor your window is opened in, that's what's going to be affected. If we had our 3D cursor here and hit A, it would deselect our UV mesh. If we have our cursor over here and hit A, it deselects over here, which is what I want because I wanted that to go away over there. So now we're going to click on our shorts, hit Control L. We have just the front. We'll Oops, I forgot to hold shift. We'll control Z. Did it again. Control Z. Hold shift and click there. Then control L. So now we have all our shorts. Hit U. Unwrap. So now we see where the shorts unwrap. So we're happy with that. So we'll come back over here. Hit A. Deselect here. Control L. And because we now have the mirror modifier applied, it'll no longer work here. We're going to have to hold shift and select here, here, and here. Control L. Now we have all of our legs. Hit U, unwrap. So there's our leg pieces. Now we'll come up here to our head. Hit A to deselect. Control L selects the whole head. Hit U, unwrap. There's our head. A to deselect. Come to the hand. Control L and hold shift. Select here. Control L, U, unwrap. So there we see the hand. And here you can clearly see this is the back and this is the underside of the hand. Um, now because the mirror modifier is no longer on we're going to have to do the same thing with the other side otherwise we'll end up with just one hand. So we're going to deselect and we're going to turn her around and if I can get her to cooperate select control L hold shift Select Control L, U to unwrap. There's the other hand. Hit A. And we're going to not mess with the shoes at this point just for the sake of time. So everything should be unwrapped now. Now you say, well, where is it? I can't see anything over here. Okay, I'm going to switch this back to edges just because it looks more aesthetically pleasing and easier to deal with. I'm going to hit A which selects the entire model and you look over here on your UV map and you're like what the heck is that mess over there? And what that is is 
each one of the pieces that you've unwrapped which showed up individually over here in the UV nice and big so you could see it and make sure that it was right is piled one on top of the other so there's really nothing you can do with this to look at it just like that so blender and in its infinite wisdom being the wonderful program that it is you come down here to where it says UVs and it gives you these options here first one is pack islands what's that's going to do is each one of your UV sections blender calls an island what it's going to do when I click that is take this mess and arrange it into nice islands so we click and there we see each one of the things was resized and placed ever so nicely so that you can make out exactly what it is the other one is average island scale and what that's going to do is it's going to take each one and it's going to make them a certain size so that they're all basically the same size and then if you pack islands again it will arrange them so that they all fit within your um, UV map now where this becomes interesting is let's say um, the, the model that you're going to do requires a lot of detail on the face or a lot of detail on the front of the shirt what you can do is while you're hovering over this window press A to deselect everything click one piece here control L and select just this shirt you can then hit S to scale scale this shirt up hit G to move it and remember to left click to lock it into place R to rotate left click to lock it in place G to move it and have it so it fits onto your UV map and let's say you want to put a lot of detail on that so now you hit A and deselect hit A again to select everything don't hit average island scale this time because you don't want all of them to be the same scale because you just rescaled one of them what you hit is pack islands and what it will do is arrange everything around the bigger version of the one that you want nice and big so that you can add detail to it so that's just a nice way of being able to control your UV meshes so that you can um, give attention to the ones that have more detail if for some reason you needed to move or you wanted to move to have a certain arrangement of things with your cursor over this 3D window hit A select the one you want to move just any point within it control L to select just that one hit G you can now move this anywhere you want as long as it stays within your UV square so let's say you wanted to put the hands over here now this one is here it's highlighted if I come here and click and then hit control L now that just that one's highlighted hit G move it over and you can just go through your entire mesh and place them wherever you, you want them to be or you can leave them where blender put them now if let's say you wanted the face to be larger just like the shirt by a little bit select the face hit control L S to scale we're gonna scale it up Oop, not that big say about like that then again we come down to UVs hit pack islands not average island scale because we the scales are now different and I forgot to unselect that one so control Z to go back one A to deselect A to select everything pack islands and now the face is big the shirt is big and everything else is just a little bit smaller and see how these touch here that's where moving them over into these unused spaces can come in handy so you would deselect click one control L G to move and then you can move anything wherever you want um, it's just an easy way of keeping track of your mesh and putting things in the the best order for you to be able to do as much detail on the big ones and as little detail on the smaller ones as you need to 
Well, that's it for this video on UV unwrapping. It's my first blender tutorial and I appreciate you watching. Comment, like, or subscribe below if um, you like this video and you wanna see more. Ollie does most of the modeling. I do the UV unwrapping, texture painting, and all of that. So um, I'd like to do some future videos on those and maybe get a little more into the uh, UV mesh unwrapping. But like I said, this is just a short, simple way to unwrap and control your UVs to be able to uh, move on to the next step after that. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.